to the Midterm Rental Mastery Show. My name is Tanisha Spencer. I'm still getting used to saying that. And today I would like to do a really quick video about managing your own properties and troubleshooting problems. So if any of you have never owned a property before, uh, let me tell you, like not even the same as having problems at your own house. But then you have to deal with problems at another house. And a lot of people wonder, what do I do, especially when the property is far away from you? So I have literally no script today. I'm just going to talk. You see, my background is blurred. It's because I'm still trying to clean up my house from Christmas. And I just don't want you to see my mess. So I have it covered up. So I just want to talk about a couple of uh, troubleshooting things that came up for me this week and why it is so important for you to start building out your SOPs, which is your standard operating procedures, especially when you have a problem. Because there's no way that you're going to anticipate every single issue that you have. But the question is, how do you handle it? Number one, so that if it comes up again, you know exactly what to do. And then if you hire someone, if you haven't already, and you're doing the management, how do you tell them to go handle it? So the first issue I had this week was one of my uh, renters called me and said, hey, our locks aren't working. So I use the uh, slage lock, whatever you want to call it. So I use that on code lock. It's very pretty. It's really easy to install if you've never installed one yourself. Um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. And YouTube is a wonderful place, which we'll talk about. So she calls me and said, Tanisha, our codes aren't working. Now, mind you, this house is only like 10 minutes for me, so I could go over there. I was ready to go, like put on my coat. I got my coat and everything out of the closet. Then I stopped for a second and I said, okay, if this property was one of mine in Arizona or Virginia Beach or in North Carolina or some other area, would I be able to hop in the car and go deal with it? Well, no, I can't. So this is where you go through troubleshooting problems. So the first thing is I go to my app. And I look to see, when is the last time that the lock was connected? Well, I see that it's disconnected. It's not working. It doesn't even show me anything. So then I say, hey, can you check and see if there's any lights on? Like, what is it doing? Well, I know the batteries aren't dead because I just replaced them like two months ago. So they are definitely not dead. So next thing, batteries aren't dead. The lights are still working. Okay, it still has power. So I go to YouTube, right? I go look on YouTube because it is a wonderful, wonderful place, which is probably why you're here on YouTube right now. So I go to YouTube and I look up slash lock or whatever you call that lock again, is not working, what do I do? So one of, the, um, one of the videos literally said how to just pull the batteries out and then just put them back in. Sometimes that works. It works for your remote controls on your house. Like, I'm not, well, not really your house, but your remotes for your TVs, the remotes for like video game systems, it all works. So just spin them around or I know some people who put batteries in the freezer. I mean, whatever works for you, cool. So I had her go do that. Now I asked her permission. I said, would you mind doing some troubleshooting with me before I have to come out or before I send someone over? She said, sure. I take the video and I send it to her so she can see exactly how to pull the lock, the back of the lock off to get to the batteries because it's not like it's inside of a lock closet. It's on the door. She says, oh, thanks so much for sending this video because the video helped. So what do we do? She pulls the batteries out. She puts them back in, puts the lock back on. She texts me and says that it's done. Wonderful. We wait a couple of minutes. I recycle the app. It's green again. So I ask her, can you please check one more time before I have to get up and, and come over to the house? She checks, all working, all fine. Now I was about to leave the house in the cold, because it's cold outside right now, drive all the way over there. I mean, it's only 10 minutes, but 10 minutes is 10 minutes. Just to go do something that clearly she was able to do in about three minutes. So troubleshooting, document. I documented what the problem was. I documented the steps that I took to walk her through it. I documented her responses and the resolution. So now the next time that that happens, number one, I already know the first things that I want to try, but I have the YouTube link resource. I have a whole folder that is outlining troubleshooting issues. So I don't have to deal with figuring it out later. I already have it built as a guide. So now 
my assistant can easily take care of those things and I don't have to do it. Okay. Another thing we're troubleshooting right now is uh, we have a lock that for some reason the code isn't working, except nobody changed the code. So right now what I'm doing on this one again, YouTube, wonderful place. I'm going on YouTube. I'm literally sending the videos to my cleaning staff so they can see how to fix the problem. So this goes into, again, the documentation, knowing your locks, knowing your systems, document everything. If you have a specific type of lock, document it. I take pictures of the, um, you know, those QR codes and stuff that come in the boxes when you buy stuff. Take pictures of the QR codes, put them in your systems, document them. How will you handle problems when they arise? Think about that. What problems could you have accessing a house and how would you resolve it? Do you have additional keys with your cleaners or with a runner if somebody gets locked out of the house? What are you going to do? This video is not super long. I really wanted to just talk today about one of the issues that I had, how I troubleshooted it and how our shot shoot, which one is it? I'm really good at like words and stuff, but I'm just losing my mind today. But again, whatever that word is, it doesn't matter. I'm not overthinking it, which I am classic for doing. Document, 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 document everything because it's going to make your life easier, your team's life easier, everybody that is involved in the process, including your guests. So if you guys have any questions or maybe you've run into a problem and you want to share it with somebody else, what the problem was and how you resolved it, share that down in the comments. I really appreciate you guys continuing to watch. And um, I have some really cool things lined up because we have some guest speakers and we're going to start doing live sessions so you can ask questions. I have lined up a guy who bought a property on creative finance and was able to get a midterm rental booking almost immediately. And funny enough, he worked with someone that I know um, that called him about the house. And um, I've got some people that are come on, gonna, going to come on and talk about acquisitions and how you can acquire properties. I am going to go through a series on how to talk to people and really get over the fear of having conversations and talking about the value of your business. And uh, so it's going to be pretty exciting what we have coming up for some live shows. And who knows, like you guys hear me talk about that guy, Pace Morby. He's my brother. And um, I am well overdue for having him come on the show. So I'm going to also do a live. I just got to get it on his schedule so he can come on and talk about creative finance and um, just talk about him as a person. So look out for these to start being live. Um, I think I'm going to do them on Fridays around the same time, but I just have to check people's schedules. So thank you again for supporting the channel, the videos, much, much appreciated. And I will see you on the next episode. Thank mm -hmm. you.